Paul Francis says that the presence of migrants, quote, is an opportunity for human growth, encounter, and dialogue between cultures and religions. Following his appeal at Sunday's address to pilgrims, the Holy Father called for journeys of hope to no longer turn into journeys of death. Through a message released by Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Perilin, the Holy Father called for welcome and solidarity for refugees. Joining us now from Rome is Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief. Andreas, great to see you as always. Can you tell us more about the Holy Father's message? Sure. So a week ago, more than 70 refugees died off the Italian coast in a shipwreck. Pope Francis addressed this tragedy in his Angelus prayer last Sunday. And yesterday, Cardinal Powell and the Vatican Secretary of State urged those in power to do more for those fleeing their homeland. It's no secret, Tracy, that Pope Francis is opposed to the current political line of the Italian government when it comes to refugees. While his encounter with Prime Minister Giorgio Meloni has been friendly in tone, we shouldn't make a mistake. The way Italy and many other European countries are dealing with refugees is a matter of concerns to the Vatican. And you know, next week we celebrate the 10th anniversary of Pope Francis's pontificate. And in these 10 years, he made it clear that the Catholic Church is on the side of the marginalized. In the Angelus Prayer, the Holy Father condemned also the whole role of human traffickers, who in this case pressed more than 170 people into one boat and sent it from Turkey toward the Italian shores. It never arrived. And he said, may they, these voyages of hope never again turn into these voyages of death. I also understand Cardinal Perling addressed this topic yesterday. Yes, that is absolutely right, Tracy. In a meeting with journalists during the opening of a new uh, charitable church institution, Colonel Parolin read a letter from Pope Francis. At the heart of the pontiff's message was the tragedy in Italy's south. Pope Francis called refugees our brothers and sisters and saw a big opportunity for personal growth in their presence in our countries. Also, Cardinal Perlin reminded everyone of their responsibility to not turn a blind eye on such tragedies, but that the value of human life must always take the first place. And speaking of Cardinal Perlin, Andreas, uh, he is also part of a council of cardinals that the Pope renewed today. Is that correct? Yes, we just learned earlier today, Tracy, that Pope Francis called five new members into his Council of Cardinals. This group was established in 2013 by the Holy, Holy Father to help him, as he said, govern the universal church. And this council, therefore, is, of course, very important. There are two changes that I find significant that I wanted to share also with you. First of all, we have the German Cardinal Reinhard Marx, who is no longer part of this council. He was one of the main proponents of the German Synodal Path, for which Pope Francis found very clear words recently, I would say. And secondly, Cardinal Jean-Claude Hollerick joined. He's the Relator General for the Global Synodal Path. And he made he headlines last year when he questions the Church teaching on homosexuality. Later on, he insisted not to have a personal agenda for the ongoing synodal process and would not favor a change of doctrine. By the way, in their last meeting in December, the Council spoke about the Synod of Synodality, and it seems safe to assume that the Cardinals will continue to advise the Pope also in this matter. Andreas, thank you so much for that report. We appreciate it. Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief, thank you again.